Woohoo! Yeah, we did it. We reached that milestone. 4,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much for subscribing to my channel and following my content throughout the past few years. Really, really big moment for me, although it's a relatively low subscriber count. However, for me, this subscriber count means a lot. It's a significant milestone. I've been doing YouTube now for around almost three years and really want to take the time to thank you and express my gratitude and appreciation for keeping up with my content, commenting, liking my videos, and sharing them with your colleagues and friends. This is a big milestone for everyone, for all of us together in this community that are enthusiastic about nuclear energy, nuclear power technologies. And as you know, nuclear power technologies across the world are really embracing almost like a secondary renaissance. So in light of this video, I made this video specifically to celebrate this occasion, but also go through my YouTube journey and maybe encourage my followers here on YouTube on this platform platform, but also the nuclear community worldwide, those that are enthusiastic about reactor technologies across the world or clean energy, really want to inspire them with this video, and showcase my YouTuber journey, something that I don't really speak about too often. Looking back this past year, the year 2022 was probably my most consistent year on YouTube in terms of posting content, coming up with creative content and really experimenting. I nearly doubled my subscriber count, right? So around this year, uh, this time of year. I was at around 2000 subscriber. One year later, fast forward, you'll see it's at 4000 subscribers. Now there's a lot more interesting initiatives on this channel and outside of the channel as well. Like my recent podcast that I launched going nuclear with Osama big, check it out in Spotify link in the description below and a few more initiatives. All right. So in this video, I'm going to go through the top five or six questions that I get asked very often in terms of my YouTube journey. And I'll answer them very frankly and very transparently. So I'll jump right into the first question which is how did you start your YouTube channel and what inspired you to create content? All right, so I officially started my YouTube journey in May 25th of 2019. Yeah, it's when I posted my very first video, which was which was called Tritium, a fuel to power our world. And this was a video that was created for a competition. So an online competition that was hosted by the World Nuclear University or for the World Nuclear University Olympiad. Unfortunately, I was late in submitting this video, but it was the start of my journey. It was the start of creating educational informative videos, which are quick, which are powerful and have that big impact. So looking back at it, I'm quite embarrassed <laughs> because the video was a bit of like a PowerPoint, but it was a very interesting moment where I got a chance to do research. I got a chance to work through video editing softwares, script, right? And also interview one of my professors at the university. So overall really fun, fun part of the process. All right. So fast forward to April of 2020 from that one year mark, that's when I had a little bit more more time on my hands. I recently graduated. There was a COVID-19 pandemic as well, which gave me a lot more time on my hands to experiment with YouTube, see how it was like to speak to a camera, also experience script writing, video editing, understanding how to make good thumbnails and titles. So it's, it's all part of the process. And I think April of 2020 was when I started to take things a little bit more seriously. So in April of 2020, around the same time, I came across a YouTuber named Ali Abdal. So Ali Abdal is a UK based medical YouTuber. He's a medical doctor, so a professional in his day job, but also in his free time, he creates YouTube videos and the content that he created really resonated with me. Not, not because I was interested in medical school content, but because of how he formatted things, how he spoke about a wide array of topics like productivity and using notion and different cool softwares online. And I loved how he was able to express his nerdiness and create educational and informative videos, which brought value to someone like myself who has a completely different background, but I found his content entertaining, educational, and overall very inspiring and motivating. He also really promotes the fact that education is such an important and core aspect of his life. So I really found his content motivating and inspiring. And I really thought to myself, there's so many YouTubers in the medical niche on YouTube. However, there's not many that are in the nuclear engineering or nuclear science niche. I felt as though our industry, the nuclear energy industry, has so much to offer so much scientific nuanced content. You know, I studied a very niche subject as well, nuclear engineering. And I thought that, Hey, there isn't an Ali Abdal for the nuclear energy industry. So why don't I try to become one? And that's kind of where I started my journey. Ali Abdal was someone that motivated me and really inspired me to start this journey. So really have him to thank. However, before starting to make videos on nuclear energy and nuclear power technologies, I really started with really simple, easy topics, topics where I wouldn't embarrass myself in case one of my colleagues actually 
accidentally came across one of my videos. So I would make content on book reviews, right? Book reviews like self-help books that I've been reading. I would make content on my experiences in the undergraduate program. So pretty much safe video content, which was not really nuclear specific. And I think this was great because those first 10, 15, 20 videos really helped me develop that muscle to understand what it takes to do YouTube and also experiment, start polishing up my public speaking skills to a camera, which are very different than speaking to a wide audience, learning how to script write, learning how to really start your videos with a nice snappy hook right? Understanding what makes a good solid video. All right. So I'll jump into the next question, which is what has been your favorite video so far? All right. So this is a tough one because there's almost a hundred of them so far, but my favorite video so far on my channel is one of my recent videos where I do a vlog of the McMaster nuclear reactor. This is one of the most powerful nuclear research reactors in the country in Canada. It's a, a nearly five megawatt. I think it's operating at around three megawatt research reactor. And it was incredible. It was such a really fun experience documenting that research reactor, meeting the faculty, meeting people that run the day to day of that reactor who do research there to researchers and professors, and also just getting a chance to be the first YouTuber to be at that facility to document that facility on a public channel. Uh, that's incredible because this research reactor is nearly half a century old. So being a content creator, which was trusted enough to create a video on this reactor was just phenomenal. We also got really a lot of exclusive access into a lot of areas that the public doesn't get to see. So I've done a public tour of that research reactor. However, this was a really unique experience because I got a chance to stand right on top of the reactor bridge where the reactor is fueled, right? Or the bridge that actually holds the reactor itself. So it was, it was just another experience because, you know, this is more of a pool type reactor. You see the Cherenkov glow. However, when you're right on top of the bridge, it's a completely different experience, right? And I got a chance to capture that on video. Another really cool part of that video was checking out the hot cells, checking out the basement of the reactor, which was also exclusive access, seeing the beam ports. So overall, just incredible video. It wasn't my best performing video, but a video that I really had fun filming, but also a fun video that I, I always look back at. So yeah, I would love to get an opportunity to do more these videos, I would love to get the chance to explore more reactor sites and feature them on my channel. And the reason why is because I feel as though the general public doesn't really get a chance to tour nuclear facilities as often. And I feel as though making something like a reactor tour accessible to the public really helps bring that technology to the forefront. It helps demystify and really remove the fears that people usually have around this technology. So overall, I would love that experience. Also, it's it's an ex incredible experience for myself as well. It's kind of like a bucket list, which I have of, of reactor facilities that I've seen already. So definitely looking forward to doing more of these videos. All right, so another really popular question that I get asked very often is how do you come up with the ideas for your videos, right? So my videos cover a large array of different topics. To be honest, there's a few different buckets that I've developed over the past few years, one of which is can do reactor content, right? So really niche videos on can do reactor and the reason why is because I'm Canadian. Uh, it's can do is my bread and butter. It's what I learned in school. So I make videos on can do, but I also make videos for nuclear engineering students. So this includes Q and A's, more in-depth information about the nuclear engineering program and my experiences studying from that program. Then there's also content like podcasts. This is a new branch or bucket that I've created recently. And this is an opportunity for other leaders in the nuclear energy space to share their journeys, share their experiences and really share their knowledge knowledge on more of an informal conversation basis. Then there's also videos that are more experimental, right? So I really love to experiment with different topics, see if they resonate with people on this online platform, right? So I think YouTube is a great way to creatively experiment with different topics, put it out there, see what people think, tweak things. One example is videos on Germany's nuclear industry right? Or the UAE's story of the Baraka nuclear power plant and how that was a success story, right? So the countries and their nuclear power journeys, that's something that I'm always fascinated by. Also, uh, nuclear waste is another bucket or topic that is a new topic that I'm starting to explore now, right? So overall, these buckets, in a sense, are growing. However, there are topics that come to mind in those specific buckets that I start crafting video ideas around, right? So I start with an idea, it transforms into a script, 
the script is usually peer reviewed or double checked by myself and then the content's created. Also another really cool bucket that I forgot to mention was book reviews, right? So I love reading, uh, you know, my Kindle is my everyday companion and I love to read. And I think these book review videos really keep me accountable for always staying in touch with some sort of nuclear energy content, always be consuming it, trying to find more ideas as well, because books, when you read them, there's a million different ideas that stem from one book that you might read. Right. So that one book might help me come up with four or five other topics that could become four or five other videos. Right. Also, book reviews help me with my Goodreads challenge as well. Right. Keeps me accountable to actually read the amount of books that I've uh, I've signed up to read for the entire year. So overall, those are my buckets of ideas and how I source those ideas and where they kind of fall in that spectrum. So if you're curious and want to see more videos in a specific bucket, please let me know in the comments below. All right. So the next question is, what challenges have you faced? as a YouTuber and how did you overcome them, right? So the biggest challenge I think uh, for myself and for a lot of YouTubers out there is perfectionism, right? So perfectionism is a big, big challenge because when you create a video, you could really go above and beyond to make it just world-class cinematic and have the perfect edits, have the perfect sound effects, have the perfect B-roll. It takes up a lot of your time and energy, but the main purpose of a YouTuber is to really churn out that content and and iterate over time. And I think perfection is the enemy of the great. I think that's what the quote was. So perfectionism is definitely one challenge that I still struggle with and, and has been a struggle for myself since day one. I've overcome this challenge of perfectionism by seeing content creation as more of a process rather than a piece of art that needs to be perfected, right? So that's how I emotionally have detached myself from my <laughs> content creation journey, right? And really overcome perfectionism. The second challenge is consistency. I think to be successful on this platform or any social media platform in this day and age, you've got to be consistent. You've got to consistently be cranking out videos. And I think, of course, perfectionism is one thing that bleeds into it, but also lifestyle management is very important as well. Because in life, you're balancing full-time job, but also doing YouTube on your free time, whether it be your weekends, evenings, early mornings, it's very challenging to be consistent if you don't put in that work, if you don't systemize the process, right? So throughout the weekday, I'll be writing scripts in my free time, right? And then when it comes to a weekend or evening, this is a great time for me to have large chunks of time to actually record these videos, right? So I've developed a bit of a routine where I can consistently crank out content and consistently create content, which is of high quality. So I think consistency is definitely the second challenge. However, I've overcome it by creating processes and systems and setting up my, uh, my day-to-day -day schedule so that I can consistently create content without missing too many weeks. I think this last year was a big, big milestone for myself because it's the year which I created content the most cons most consistently ever, right? So it was a big win for myself and really proud of that. Another challenge that I had was connecting with like-minded people. It's very difficult to find content creators because content creation overall is a huge commitment, number one. It's a huge responsibility that you're taking on in your free time. So rather than enjoying that time with your family, your friends, you know, traveling more, you're creating content, you're doing more work, taking on more stress overall, right? You have gotta enjoy it. You really gotta be passionate about it. Uh, day to day and it's it's difficult to find like-minded people however i have found like-minded people throughout the last year and it has really kept me accountable it ha has helped kept me grounded it's also helped me share ideas with them and understand hey listen how can i optimize youtube right so over the last year a few of my content creator friends right like architecture with ashley i think you know the mba coach and these are a few of my youtuber friends which i meet on a weekly basis and we have a bit of a master mind where we discuss our challenges, discuss our priorities, discuss little tips and tricks of things that we're tweaking in our videos. We also have uh, annual meetups in the YouTuber community, right? Professional YouTuber community here in Toronto. So that has really been a fun way to not do this alone, right? Feel as though YouTube and content creation is such a solo journey. It can become lonely at times and it's great to have company. It's great to have people encouraging you and motivating you and succeeding alongside with them. 
Next question is how has YouTube impacted your life and what were some of the key lessons that you learned along the way? All right, so YouTube has helped me learn about the power of iteration, all right? So nothing great in this world is created overnight. Rather, it's slowly and consistently iterates over time. Okay, and this is what I've learned through YouTube, right? A few years ago, I, I struggled and spent maybe like 15 to 20 hours creating one of my videos, which were horribly edited, right? Over time, I learned and refined the process. And that's the fun of it, right? It's the refinement of the process. It's really the transformation over time. And I think it's the craft, right? It's the craft of YouTube, which is almost like being a pottery maker, making those pots, making whatever it is out of clay. It's a craft, right? YouTube itself is a craft for myself. It's something that I'm happy that I discovered, right? A lot of people across the world, they spend their lives and they never discover that craft, which they can always be working on, always be experimenting on and refining to develop. It's also a passion, right? So I think passion is so powerful because on this channel, it's the one source of fuel that you have to drive yourself forward, right? And I think whether it be simplifying topics and creating better scripts, which help boil down technical topics into very easy to understand narratives, right? It's, it's science communication at the end of the day. But this is only one part of it. There's also the other parts like lighting. It's the hardware, right? A few years ago, I purchased my camera. I didn't even know how to use it. I was so confused by the aperture, by all of these interesting things. And now it's like second nature. It's something that I just pick up and I and intuitively know how to use. Also understanding that tools, these are just tools. They don't really make or break your content. I could be creating these videos, you know, 100 videos or so with my phone camera. And it really wouldn't hinder too much of the production itself. However, what I've learned is tools are important, but they're not a necessity. Tools aren't necessarily what make or break uh, your success. Right. And sometimes YouTubers fall into this trap. They think that, hey, listen, if I upgrade my camera, if I upgrade my sound, if I upgrade my lighting, my overall world will change. And, and realistically, no, it won't. So I think the relationship that I've started to develop with my tools is very different. I see them like that. I see them as tools, not necessarily a means to an end. Also editing techniques, right? I think editing is that one area which can lead to perfectionism. It's kind of like that dark, dark, deep hole, which you keep jumping down uh, toward and it's like never ending. However, it's, it's really fun, right? I see more from that fun perspective, whether it be the sound effects, whether it be B-roll, whether it be sliding transitions. I see what really works with people. I, I show them these videos, I get their feedback. I integrate different soundtracks, whatever it is. Editing is also another really dimension and world which I've learned to come to peace with right, in terms of perfectionism. All right, so another two things that I've learned from this YouTuber journey is number one, getting out of my comfort zone. So something that's very challenging like this, like YouTube has consistently put myself outside of my comfort zone for the past few years. And I think your comfort zone, getting out of it is where the growth really happens. Whether it be talking about ideas, complex ideas like nuclear waste, which are kind of like almost industry taboos, which no one really talks about. It has been incredible experimenting with that. Or overall, just gaining the confidence to develop this content over time and it being enjoyed by other people is something that really has helped me come out of my comfort zone. Another really big thing that I've learned on this YouTuber journey is patience, right? I think patience is really important. I've been doing this uh, YouTube thing for the past few years and what I've learned is that, hey, listen, you've got to be patient, right? I'm at 4,000 subscribers now. However, it's taken me almost three years to get to that point. And what I've learned is growth on social media platforms is is really dependent on that quality, quantity, but also timing and patience. So patience is definitely a virtue, right? Something that, you know, you're not gonna get overnight success. And I think that's really healthy. I think no one here on this platform that's consistently creating educational video content is looking for overnight success. It's something that comes with developing that craft, developing that passion, and also maybe getting lucky on the way, right? So I think patience is definitely something that I've had to hone over time, really come to terms with, and also be happy and satisfied with. All right, so next question is, what are your future goals for your YouTube channel and what can your viewers expect for your future content? I think one of my goals is to launch a podcast channel. 
And that's something that I ended up doing this year. I think podcasts are an incredible way to share information, share insights, also provide others platform where they can really speak to various topics. I think that's a really important part about being a content creator. It's allowing others or giving others the opportunity to share their stories, inspire others, motivate others. And I think that's a part of winning with others. Something that I love doing. Like I was saying before, YouTube is such a solo game. You're so fixated on refining content and, and making it better. However, I think podcasts allow you to network proactively, go out there, speak to others, learn from them, right? And really share that on a platform and on a centralized platform. And I think that's really powerful, especially in the day-to-day -day age of content creation, where there's an ocean's worth of content. However, you know, for those that are interested in the nuclear energy industry, learning about nuclear energy, learning about careers in a certain industry, these are all areas where, which can be captured and someone that, you know, for example, myself, I see myself for four or five years ago, or more than that now, I think like seven, eight years ago in high school, learning about nuclear energy energy and careers in that industry and going online on different forums and learning about, hey, listen, how much does a nuclear engineer make? Or, you, you know, what, what do I have to know about retirement process or about careers in this industry or about security clearance? So there's so many questions that people have across the world on various topics. And I think you could really explore that through podcasts. So definitely one of my big goals for this year is to really develop a platform which provides others an opportunity to share their stories and also others to learn from them, right? It's kind of like uh, how learning was done in the ancient days and back in the good old days. It's you're learning through those fireside chats, those fireside stories, right? It's, it's the original story sharing element. And personally, in my day to day life, I've found so much benefit from learning from podcasts every single day, right? I would ever I go for a walk before I used to listen to audiobooks. However, now I'm more fixated on podcasts because I learned so much. It helps me cross pollinate so many different types of content ideas. It really helps me brainstorm and it's phenomenal overall. So I would say podcasts are my next future goal for YouTube. So weekly podcast plus a weekly video, which is a huge kind of hairy audacious goal. But I think it's going to be a fun challenge, right? It's definitely going to help me in my networking aspect. And it's going to help me kind of diversify the, the content that I create on YouTube here. All right. So the next question is, what are your most memorable comments that you've received from viewers and how have they impacted you? All right. So this is a really interesting question. I think there's so many messages and comments that I receive every single day on this platform, which is why I love it. Uh, I would say one of the most recent messages I received is someone acknowledging my my content saying that, hey, listen, like I'm surprised how low subscriber count this this channel has. I thought this channel would have hundreds of thousands of subscribers. The content is just so good, right? It just goes to show that people are appreciating the content. They're understanding how much value it adds to the online community. It made it worth all that patience, right? It made me, it really helped me ground myself and really understand that, hey, listen, people are finding value from this and it, it was fuel to my fire to kind of continue doing YouTube. I would say another comment that I received is someone from another country, I think it was Brazil, commenting on one of my nuclear engineering videos, undergrad videos, saying that, hey, listen, it's very difficult to find content on nuclear engineering undergrad. I love this video. Please make more of these, right? So that was really helpful for me because it's amazing to know that there's folks from across the world, students that are interested in studying nuclear engineering. I think another really interesting comment that blew my mind mind was a mother that wanted to her daughter to enroll in nuclear engineering. And this was really interesting because whenever I read comments online, I always envision a younger person, right? I never envision a mother or father or brother or sister that's looking to get advice for their own daughter or for their own child. It's really interesting because I would always envision my parents, you know, going to a career fair and kind of asking professors. However, it's incredible to know that parents are also using these platforms to, to read comments, to also contribute and, and learn, right? And actively, proactively ask in comments, hey, listen, can you can you tell me more, more about this career uh, in this industry, about this program as well? Uh, another really comment that, that, that I loved was a student in, in, in middle school talking about how her teacher had played one of my videos in her class and she had had to watch that video for a class assignment, right? So I think it's incredible how teachers are leveraging these resources and utilizing them inside their classes. Honestly, it really made my day, right? So I would say that was another really cool comment. Personal emails and messages are also, I, I love. I think one recent email that I got was of a student that was struggling in university and they say that 
my videos have really helped them get through this journey. So it's really touching and really warms my heart to see students reach out to me almost like a mentor for advice, right? So it's uh, it's really interesting, right? It's, uh, it's, it's really cool, you know, those experiences, you know, whenever I go on certain campuses at university, I get recognized, hey, listen, you're Sama, can you help me with this, right? So I, I feel as though this content that's been created online has really helped students form that connection with me and really feel comfortable approaching me uh, for, for any questions that they have. So that really, it makes me feel happy that that's the case. All right, so the next question is, can you share some advice or tips for YouTubers that are just starting out their journeys? Okay, I have a lot of advice for YouTubers that are just starting out their journey. Uh, however, what I would say is stop overthinking and get the reps in. Right, so when you first start off at the gym, you wanna get as many reps in different areas as possible, right? Before you start niching into those compound exercises. And you wanna treat YouTube in the same way. Before developing a strategy on, hey, I wanna develop you know, my quadriceps or my biceps or my et cetera, et cetera, different muscles in your body, or in this case, different video strategies or, or different content strategies, get the reps in, right? It's really important to know what you're getting yourself into and before committing to it and making that mental commitment commitment to something which is an extremely long journey. I think YouTube is also a marathon, right? It's, it's a marathon. You're going to need to motivate yourself in different ways, whatever that motivation that works for you. However, understand that it's a marathon. Maybe I would say it's a lifelong commitment, but it's, it's a commitment for, I would make a commitment for the next five to 10 years. Those are years that I have in mind, which I've committed to already, right? So I would say, number one, it's a long-term commitment, start slow, experiment, have fun with it, and know that don't let the views get to you, right? So I think when you on YouTube first start making content, you're gonna maybe get 30 views on one of your videos, right? Hey, 30 views, that's a lot. It's like almost like a full classroom size, right? So really try to see things from that perspective that, hey, listen, I got 30 views on a video that I work 15 to 20 hours on, but hey, listen, though that's a full class size. Right, so understand the impact that you're making and don't let the numbers get to you. Also understand that you have skin in the game. You're the one that's putting yourself out there and that comes with the risks, but it also comes with rewards, right? So YouTube is a risky endeavor. You're you're putting yourself out there. You're putting content out there. As an educational YouTuber, it's really important to source your content. It's important to make sure that you're representing yourself accurately and professionally. However, what's great is the rewards are also there. You're the gladiator in the ring. You're the one that's putting in the reps. So if you get criticized, understand that hey listen you're the one that has skin in the game you're the one that's putting yourself on the line and I, I think it's worth it I find as though those that are consistently doing YouTube and creating content are very proactive people they're people that are proactive in life but also you know in terms of this journey right so I, I would say there aren't many people like this in the world uh, you're unique you're putting in that effort and it's gonna bear fruit so keep on going all right, so last question, last but not least, is how has your content evolved since you first started your channel and what changes have you made along the way? I think my content has evolved a lot. I think personally, I've evolved a lot, right? I think uh, speaking to a camera was probably one of my most challenging things to do, right? Because I've been speaking in the past for several years, public speaking, and it came so naturally to me. When I came into a room, I really I feed off the energy of the other people in that room. And what's interesting is when you've got a camera and yourself only, and you have to look right into the lens, right? It's so daunting at first. It's so scary. I remember actually being scared of the camera, right? Not knowing how to speak to it. Because like I said, when I walk into a classroom or a room, I feed off that energy and, and that's what helps me or originally helped me public speak, right? So I think talking to a camera is very different than talking to people. I think finding that spark, right? That, that charisma, right? It doesn't come all of a sudden. It develops over time. I think it took me almost like 60 to 70 videos for me to truly be myself, right? I'm still learning how to perfect my public presence on a camera. So I would say that it takes time to develop. It's been a personal development journey for me. I think it's, it's a powerful, powerful thing. Right? It's a powerful skill to develop, speaking to a camera. All right? I know it sounds like not a big skill, but I think it's a skill that you're going to have to develop. Everyone's going to have to develop in the future. I would say that that is probably one of my greatest evolutions in content creation. If you look back in some of my other videos, you'll see me stuttering. Da, 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 right? Stuttering, mumbling. However, that doesn't happen as often as it does now. And even if it does, I just edit it out. So, right? so, so I would say that Personally, my content has evolved because I'm speaking about topics which I was probably more shy speaking to in the past. So I would say that is probably the biggest part of my content evolution. All right, so there you have it. Thank you so much again 
really want to express my gratitude for following me on this platform. Thank you so much for commenting, liking, or sharing my videos, or simply taking the time to watch them, right? So it's a, it's a big time commitment, especially in this extremely busy world. I really want to express this gratitude to you and really want to motivate and inspire you with this video, right? Share a little bit more about my journey, which is something that I haven't really shared on this platform as of yet. So I would say thanks again for following. If you haven't done so, subscribe and really thank you again for helping me reach this milestone. Looking forward to the next milestones to come. In the comments below, tell me when I might hit 10,000 subscribers. When do you think I'll hit 10,000 subscribers? And by next year around this time, will I double my subscriber count again? So let me know what you think in the comments below. Thanks again. Take care.